Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of my pool planning video. In this video, as if others, I'll be sharing my thoughts and plans on upcoming banners in D4 Global. As always, I will also be including timestamps in the video description that you can use to skip ahead to the section that you are interested in. First off, a quick look on how I did on recent banners and events. Across Fusoya, Pepper Limo, and Kader, I have to say that I did pretty good, but that's also because I skipped almost every banner. I also decided to skip on Pepper Limo. Nothing really against him, I know there's a lot of hype surrounding his release, since he's the first joint release with uh, Global and JP version of the game. But his kit just doesn't really suit how I generally like to approach the game and my playstyle. I did however pull for Kader, so I spent 5000 gems first after the free pulls just so that I can get the G tokens rounded up to 100. Didn't get um, her BT, I did get her FR during one of the free pulls. So then I went in with tickets and luckily I got her BT in 60 tickets which is very good luck. So overall across all those events I spent a total of 5000 gems and 60 tickets. The next event that we will be getting soon would be Kadach Intersecting Wheels and we have as usual two banners. The first will be featuring Kadach with his rework and newly released FRMBT. The second banner will feature General Leo with also the FRMBT but these aren't new weapons for General Leo and as far as I can tell, Leo will also not be getting any reworks. So what's new about Kadach? Kadash damage obviously has been updated or will be updated. His S1, S2, EX and LD all receives a damage rework. Importantly also, Kadash's signature follow-up attack, Geophagy, now is a single target brief HP damage featuring 6 HP dumps overall, which is pretty important as it factors very heavily into his DPS potential. Now if you want to really use Kadach to his full potential, you really have to pull for Kadach BT. Without the BT, the DPS potential of Kadach really plummets down to the point where I feel it's not even worth using him over other DPS characters. Now why is this important? It's not so much of the BT party auras, those are pretty standard fare and for Kadach is party brave damage and Brief damage cap plus 50%, HP damage plus 20%, and HP damage cap plus 30%. However, the important thing about Kadash BT effect is that it locks his fixation stacks and prevents them from going down in stacks. This actually makes it possible for you to have 5 stacks of fixation debuff on all enemies, something which was previously not possible. Before this rework, when Kadach switches targets, the fixation stack will reset and will only increase on the enemy that Kadach is targeting. Another crucial element of Kadach PT is that it also will now trigger his follow-up Geophagy attack after any ally attacks the enemy. This is in essence similar to General Leo's PT if you have pulled for General Leo before. So for example, you know, if you have Kadach and say maybe Estos in the party and you know the enemy has 5 stacks of fixation, Kadach has the BT aura up. When Estos attacks the enemy as well, Kadach will also trigger Geophagy and add another 6 HP dumps to the attack. This means that along with pretty good DPS during Kadach's own turn, he also becomes now somewhat of a linked attacker as well and provides good often damage. Coming on to Kadach FR, upon use, his FR will immediately inflict 4 turns of the fixation debuff on all enemies and the debuff will automatically be at level 5. So Kadach FR is a very easy way to inflict max out fixation debuff immediately. The conditionals are pretty okay. It is if you do a melee attack on your turn, you get plus 40%. And if you attack an enemy that has a stack debuff during your turn, you get another plus 40%. Attacking an enemy with a stack debuff should be 
a no-brainer because the FR itself already lends fixation and that fulfills the conditional. Melee attack, sure, you know, that depends on who the other party members are, but obviously Kadach himself is already a melee character. In addition, it is a very welcome sight to see that Kadach FR also provides a bonus HP damage and HP damage cap plus 50% every time you attack a debuff enemy, which is, like I said, should be a no-brainer. I will be going into a bit more detail into my thoughts and my evaluation in the later parts of this video, but overall my plans is more likely to actually skip these two characters, but I already have General Leo fully built, so not really skipping him more the fact that I already have him. But as for Kadach, I never really had a lot of interest in Kadach as a character anyway, and while the damage potential is good, I think I'm not in you know, any big need for it in the current version of the game. But like I said, I'll be covering a little bit more at the later part of this video. Coming to the World of Illusion Spiritus Alexander stage, here we will be getting two banners, the first featuring Deuce from FF Type 0 with a rework and new FRPT. Second banner will feature VV with a rerun of Vivi's FR and BT. As far as Deuce reworks go, first of all, her S1 is a force gauge charging ability, and now on use, it also recovers more brave for the entire party. It normally lands a buff called Note on all party members, and with the rework, Note also provides a little bit more attack up in the buff itself. Deuce's S2 will also receive a damage rework. And coming to the EX, it's now, it now charges a little bit faster, has a damage rework itself, and the EX buff also has an HP damage up effect tied to it now. Overall, pretty good. The LD didn't really change much, it did receive a damage rework. Deuce's new BT now provides a party with 8 turn uh, BT Aura. The BT used before the attack will also battery the entire party up to 100% of your max brave value. The party auras are brave damage plus 20%, brave damage cap plus 50%, HP damage plus 20%, and HP damage cap plus 30%. Importantly, now Deuce will also trigger a full up attack after her own turn while her BT Aura is up. This is a pretty powerful attack, it's 3 HP dumps only but it is AoE and it is full HP dump so it's not a splash HP attack. The follow up attack also provides the party with a new one turn buff called for Zando, hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but that buff essentially gives you an additional HP damage and HP damage cap plus 20%. Deuce gets a new FR and upon use, similar to the BT, the FR will also battery the party before doing the damage. It is also notable that Deuce FR is instant turn and her FR has two conditionals which I say I would say is very very good and generic. The first just requires you to end your turn while having the note buff up which should be a given and this gives you plus 40%. And the second just requires you to end your turn while, an, while with an ally getting battered for another plus 40%. Now the second conditional depends a bit on you know, who you bring in your party and you know, what kind of attacks that you do because obviously not all attacks will battery the party. That being said, both conditionals just requires you to end your turn so it doesn't actually require you to do some sort of attack. Which means that Deuce FR works very well with Force Gauge supercharging abilities, of which of course Deuce herself has it in her S1. So while you are in Deuce's Force Time, you could potentially spam S1 to quickly charge up your Force Gauge bonus. I really like this kind of utility and perhaps you know place it place more value in it compared to other people, but that's because of I, I generally you know like to charge the force gauge and just blast the stages so characters that can do that obviously will be used more so for that reason i plan to go for deuce hoping to be lucky as well and get her frbt in ticket pools 
I skipped VV the first time around and I don't plan to pull for VV here as well. Okay, so we're coming to the part of the video where I give my thoughts and opinions on how I would generally rate the characters that's released. I usually just put characters across two categories. The first is the good value cat category where I firmly believe that you know, regardless of your playstyle or your roster, the character is good enough to give you enough return of investment. The characters that I place in role fulfillment really depends. For example, they are already good characters and really all characters can perform fairly well in endgame content. But these are also characters that you, know, you may choose not to go for if you have other characters that can do very similar things that they can. This time around, I'm not even putting General Leo and Vivi in. They aren't really that bad. I actually do like General Leo's kit. I've used him quite a bit in the Crystal Rooms itself. But more the fact that I don't really see a big need to pull specifically for them. For example, of course, I don't see a need to pull for General Leo he, because he is getting released the same time as Kadach. So damage wise, you know, both characters has the ability to do follow-up attacks. However, Kadaj's floor attack will outdamage General Leo. Along the fact of course that Kadaj will likely trigger regardless of who you are targeting because all enemies will be getting 5 stacks of fixation. Whereas General Leo can only have his precision strike up on one enemy at a time. And General Leo's follow-up attack will not trigger if the enemy does not have precision strike. Of course, General Leo does have the 2 turn delay utility in his kit. This is something that Kadash does not have, but I don't think it's useful or value enough to go for the 2 turn delay and you know take in the DPS loss as compared to Kadash. So overall, if you want like a linked attacker and someone that can deal decent damage or melee damage then generally I would say that Kadach would see more use than General Leo and since both are released at the same day that means that you know if you really want to get one just go for Kadach. Same really goes for VV. I guess I'm not, I'm not comparing VV against Kadach because VV is also more magic attacker, more AoE but to that fact we did have of course Estos released recently or re-released recently but not only that, I feel that you know even after Vivi get his uh, BT and FR, he didn't really see a lot of use overall in the community. And I know there's there may be you know one or two people who will say, oh, but I've used Vivi a lot of times. Well, just you know overall, you know, if you browse through Call to Arms, Vivi don't really see a lot of use. And I think that's because there, there are maybe players who don't really like the fact that Vivi sacrifices HP. To do attacks and that could be potentially risky. He does do good AoE damage but so does other characters now. For example we of course have like the aforementioned Estos, we have Celtius, uh, even Pepper Limo could do you know decent AoE damage. This, if you've been play playing for a while you've probably gotten good AoE DPS and so I don't really see a need to go out of your way just to you know, spend gems, tickets and ingots to, to pull for VV. Which finally comes to, well brings me to the two characters here. And I guess covering Deus first. I really like Deus and like I said I will be pulling for her. But I don't think you know, her kit is value enough to be placed in the good value category just because of the fact that there are quite a lot of great supports now in the game. and. Deuce, I think, you know, doesn't really stand out too much, I would say. I do like the fact though that her FR conditionals are as such. And I also like the fact that she can charge the force gauge. So for me, having an updated support character that can do those things is good enough. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is also more fitting to my playstyle and preference. Whether or not you should go for deals, I think you should do whether you should consider whether you need those kind of utility for yourself. Coming to Kadach, he is actually very good in terms of DPS after his rework and his PT gets released. 
and you know as a link attacker he's probably one of the best if not maybe currently the best in terms of how much damage that he does on the linked attacks take note though that his geophagy is single target but the fact that it is 6 hp dumps is pretty strong overall other characters with single target full up attacks such as noctis or general leo generally only have 4 across the kit and even across characters that can do AOE often attacks, those are generally 2 to 3 HP dumps AOE. So having the 6 or those single target is pretty good. And you know, Kadach doesn't bring too much else beyond damage. He does of course have the fixation debuff. But I wouldn't see this as a bad thing. Generally in this game, I really like the fact that you know, there, there are characters who can specialize across certain things. And I like to bring specialized characters in my runs. It's just really the fact that at this point I feel very comfortable in damage. And I am actually hoping to see you know, when the next tier of DPS power creep comes around. At which point though, there may be other characters that you can pull for that can do very good in the DPS department. And for me in particular, I think you know, I, I don't really see a strong need in my roster now to get another updated DPS. Whether or not you should pull for Kadash, I think just depends on whether you like the fact that he does the linked attack and whether or not you see yourself losing Kadash across a number of stages. That's it for this pool plan video. In summary, I plan to go for Deus FRBT, hoping to get lucky in tickets but I will use gems if I have to. I plan to skip Kadach and Vivi and also General Leo but in Leo's case it's more because I really have him. As always I hope the video has been helpful and if you enjoyed the content, do leave a like, comment and subscribe. Till then I'll catch you guys in the next full plan video. Bye!